turn to the book of Revelation and chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, page 2046. <coughs> the letter to the church in Laodicea. Verse 14, Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> to the angel of the church in Laodicea, write the Amen, the faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God says this I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were. Cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, I become wealthy, and I have need of nothing. And you do not know that you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, that you may become rich, and white garments that you may clothe yourself, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and I self to anoint your eyes, that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. <clears throat> I don't want to expound this letter to the church in Laodicea. I just want to take one, um, one part of it, and it is simply this. This church was blind and didn't know it. This church was blind and didn't know it. The most awful of spiritual conditions is to think that you've got it all, that you're okay, that you can do it, and not to see how God sees you. They thought they had it all, they thought they were rich, but Jesus said something else about them. And I want us to think a little bit this morning about <clears throat> what it is that we need to see, that we need to see in these last days. And if you'd like to turn to Mark's Gospel, I want to look at the Olivet Discourse, what we call the Olivet Discourse and Mark's account. Mark and chapter 12. In Mark's account, it's presented in a particular kind of way, and there's five <coughs> specific <coughs> verses that begin with the word see. Depending on your translation, it may vary slightly, but there are things which we need to see, dear friends, in the last days. And we need to be very careful that we're not blind. We're not blind. 
and I want us to think about six things, but I'm not going to try and go through all six this morning, so we'll just look at three this morning that the Lord wants us to see in the last days. So let's read Mark 12 from verse 41. <clears throat> It says he sat down opposite the treasury, began observing how the multitude were putting money into the treasury, and many rich people were putting in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which amount to a cent. Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, Truly, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributors to the treasury. For they all put in out of their surplus. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she owned. All she had to live on. And as he was going out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, behold, what wonderful stones, and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another, which shall not be torn down. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew were questioning him privately. Tell us when all these things will be. And what will be the sign when all these things are going to be fulfilled? And Jesus began to say to them, See to it that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name saying, I am, and will mislead many. And when you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be frightened. Those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will also be famines. These things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Be on your guard, or see yourselves. <clears throat> For they will deliver you to the courts. Will You'll be flogged in the synagogues. You will stand before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. When they arrest you and deliver you up, do not be anxious beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but it is the Holy Spirit. Brother will deliver brother to death, and a father is child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. And you'll be hated by all on account of my name, but the one who endures to the end, he shall be saved. Three things this morning that this passage points us to that we need to see, we need to recognise and understand. The first is in the context of the passage. They were very impressed with man-made structures. They looked at the temple, this incredible construction, and they were very impressed with it. And Jesus said, don't be impressed, it's all coming down. It's all coming down. This incredible construction, 
all that man has made, Herod, had made major improvements to it. So much so it was referred to as Herod's temple. Incredible building. And Jesus said, don't be impressed. It's coming down. In the last days, dear friends, don't be impressed with man's structures. Don't be impressed. Don't be impressed by the United Nations. Don't be impressed by the European Union. Don't be impressed by man's great technologies. Don't be impressed with nations, great war machines, don't be impressed with any of it, dear friends, because it's all coming down. It's all coming down. Turn to the book of Hebrews in chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Part of the spirit behind Babylon, or Babel, is the exaltation of man and what man can do to the point where the Lord says in the account of the Tower of Babel nothing will be impossible for them nothing now <clears throat> if you're getting on a bit like me and you've been around for a while you can remember when you were young and if anyone had come to you and told you about the technology that is now in place some 50 or 60 years later, you would have laughed. You would have told them, that's nuts. It's never going to happen. But dear friends, it's <coughs> happening. The things that man is able to to do and we don't see half of it. Nothing will be impossible. When the nations and peoples come together as is happening in these days, nothing is impossible for man. We're going to see some of the weaponry and such like, some of the capabilities over these coming days. And scary things, dear friends, drones, things flying about with nobody even flying them. All kinds of incredible things which are happening in our days. Do not be so impressed with it all, dear friends, because it's all coming down. Hebrews chapter 12. See to it, you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if those did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less shall we escape who turn away from him who warns from heaven. And his voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. And this expression, yet once more, denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken, as of created things, in order that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have gratitude. Be thankful, dear friends, in everything. Give thanks. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Be thankful. By which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. The zeal, the wrath, of God. God's fiery zeal is being stirred in these days and is beginning to be poured out 
on the earth. And all the inhabitants of the earth should tremble. But not yet. They're still trusting in man. They're still trusting. We are the world. We're the people. We're the ones who'll build a brighter day. We can sort things out. Somebody will come up with an answer. Well, somebody will come up with an answer, dear friends. His name will be the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist. That's where we're heading. And everything is being shaken. All kinds of things are going to come toppling down. And all these things are hastening and accelerating the appearing of the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness. This world is being set up to willingly receive what looks to be a saviour, a deliverer. It's coming. The first seal is one on a white horse. He's going to appear like the best thing since sliced bread, if you like sliced bread. <clears throat> When they're saying peace, peace, and security. We, knew we, we need a new leader for the Security Council. We need a new initiative, a new peace process. We need all these things. Well, dear friends, in the days ahead, the world will be clamoring for all these things because God is going to shake every man-made structure, all the governments, all the leaders, all the things which are exalted by man, God is going to shake. Don't be impressed with people, dear friends. Even those that know Jesus. <laughs> be impressed with Jesus. It's all coming toppling down. All the church structures, all the great things that man has come up with, God is going to shake everything and it's all going to come toppling down. Think of the story, I've said this many times, think of the story of Jericho, the account of Jericho. What happens? They go seven times round and then the seventh day what? seven times. It's the same pattern as you see in the book of Revelation. Seven and on the seventh, seven. It's the same pattern. What's it pointing us to? This is an illustration. Jericho's like a mini illustration of what God will do when he shakes all things. He will shake the heavens and the earth. He will shake every principality and power. The principality of Islam will be shaken. <coughs> Everything will be shaken. God is giving a final opportunity for men and women to repent and put their trust in Jesus. There is mercy in all of this. There is God's amazing grace in all of this. Everything that people are putting their trust in, God is going to shake it. God's going to cause it to collapse. God's going to cause it to come down. God is going to show how futile all these things are. So that those whose hearts are open may seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. And in the account of Jericho, there was one structure which could not be shaken. What was it? Rahab's house. It was a woman who had put her complete trust in the living God. And when everything else was shaken, Rahab's house stood up like a sore thumb for all to see a kingdom which could not be shaken. That's what God wants for your life, dear friends. Think of Rahab's house. Because in the coming days, when everything is shaking, and all the structures are beginning to collapse, and everything that man exalts starts to come tumbling down, what 
will people see? They need to see in you a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Something different about you. You're still thanking your God. You're still praising Him. No matter what happens in your life, you've still got a peace. You've still got a tranquility. There's, there, you stood on a rock. When the storm comes, dear friends, it's those who've heard the word of God and acted upon it who will stand firm in the last days. Rahab's house. <clears throat> There's a contrast in the passage that we read, Mark's Gospel. They're looking and very impressed with the temple. But what is Jesus looking at? The answer is in the passage. <laughs> He's looking at a woman. The disciples are so impressed. With a beautiful temple, this structure. Look at the stones, Lord. What's he looking at? He's looking at the heart of a woman who's given everything to the Lord. Dear friends, in these days, people are looking at man's structures and man's attainments and what man can do but God is looking at the hearts of men and women and he's looking for those who have given their hearts completely to him. It's as simple as that. The eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the earth. He's looking for those whose hearts are completely given to him that he might strongly support them. Second Chronicles 16 and verse 9. That's what God said to Asa. A man who trusted the Lord in the past. And then he got too impressed with a great army. Maybe they had a few drones, I don't know. <laughs> and he put his trust in what man could do. And God rebuked him. He said, no. Don't be impressed with what man can do, dear friends. And remember that the Lord is looking. And he's looking for one thing and one thing only in these days. He's looking for hearts that are completely given to him. And he will strongly support. He'll strongly support those who were fully given. Him. What else do we need to see? Number two. Jesus says, see that you are not misled. We need to see, right dear friends, we have been given a helper, the Holy Spirit, who will lead us into all truth. We have been given the Word of God. God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Word of God. Do you need anything else? No. Again and again we are warned, dear friends, that in the last days there will be many false prophets, many false teachers, many false anointed ones. People claiming an anointing. Many. And what will they do? They will mislead many. Are there many people being misled? 
And they said, yes. And Jesus said, see that. You need to see that the vast majority of believers are being misled. They are being misled by false prophets and false teachers. See that. Watch out, dear friends, because the vast majority of so-called ministries are wrong. Don't listen to them. There are prophets, discernment ministries, by the bucket load. And they're wrong, dear friends. Don't listen to them. Who do you need to listen to? You need to listen to Jesus. You need to be spending much time in his word. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. God's going to shake everything. It's all going to go, dear friends. Don't be impressed with it. Enjoy God's creation. Have a nice walk up in Silverdale. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. The heavens declare the glory of God. Day to day, pause for speech. But don't be that impressed with it. And guess what? It's all disappearing. When Jesus comes back, it will all be changed. Praise God. So thank him for your favourite view. Your wonderful landscape. But it's going, dear friends. When Jesus comes back, it's all going to be different. Praise God. And all of man's great technologies and everything else, it's all going, dear friends. God's going to shake it all and it's all going to disappear. So don't be impressed with any of it. It's going to change it all. And the whole of creation is groaning, longing for the revelation of the sons of God, longing for the day of resurrection, when we'll all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And the whole creation is going to change, dear friends. All governments will cease to be, and Jesus will reign when he comes back. So don't be impressed with any of it. Because it's going. It's all going. And don't be impressed with any ministry. If there's one thing, dear friends, that COVID should have taught us, it's this. Did you hear one so-called prophet, one so-called Bible teacher, did you hear anybody Warning that there was something about to take place, a pandemic so-called, that all the churches would have to close and everything was going to change overnight. Did you hear one? Because I didn't. I mean, if you did, come and tell me afterwards who it was. And we'll look at their ministries. And yet, the prophets still keep crawling out of the woodwork, like wood lice. They're vermin, dear friends. Did one of them foretell what's happened in the last two years? No, dear friends. So don't listen to them. They are not hearing from God. They're coming out, they're, they're, they're making their great pronouncements about what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening here, this, that and the other. Not one of them saw what happened. Not one. I didn't. And I'm not claiming to be a prophet. Do not listen to them. Beware. And do not be misled. 
I've forgotten the names, thankfully I can't remember the names, otherwise I'd name a few, but... Don't listen to them, dear friends. There's one that you need to hear. You need to hear from Jesus. You need to hear the Word of God by the Spirit of God for these days. God's Word is the lamp that you need to enlighten your way, to see you through. Might be that you've got to turn off your YouTube or whatever it is. Because, dear friends, it's full of people making all kinds of bold predictions and that they, they've got it all planned out. And Jesus says, don't be misled. Don't listen to them. Turn to John and chapter 13. <clears throat> The truth of it is, if we would admit it, what we would really like is a nice, <coughs> a nice chart <clears throat> with a timeline. Isn't it true? We'd like a nice timeline chart with all the prophetic events in perfect order and a few dates on there, preferably. So we can just tick them all off as we go along. That's what we'd love, isn't it? Admit it. <laughs> All right, Ukraine, yeah, that's that one. What's next? But guess what, dear friends? God didn't give us one. He didn't give us one. And don't listen to people who come up with one. Don't. I don't care who they are, don't listen to them. There are certain things that God has given us as a pattern. But we don't have that kind of timeline, dear friends. John chapter 13, did I say? Yes. Verse 19. From now on, Jesus says, I am telling you before it comes to pass. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you. He's telling us before it comes to pass. Why? So you've got it all planned out, and you won't have to worry about anything. No, he didn't say that, did he? Why does the Lord tell us things beforehand? So when it does occur, you may believe. that Jesus is in full control. He knows it all. He is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. And he's told us beforehand. It's all there, dear friends, so that when it happens, you don't run around like a headless chicken. You are strengthened that God is in full control. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, when you see pandemics, when you see plagues, when you see famines, when you see all these things, it's not yet the end. But when you see them, you should believe this book is the Word of God. It should strengthen you, dear friends. The more you see, we're a privileged people. We're living in the generation that will see the Lord's return. I think we can confidently say we're a privileged people, dear friends. As hard as it will be, as awful as some of the things will be in the days ahead, we see these things and we can believe, we can be strengthened that the Lord's in control. Not one word will fall to the ground. All that God has promised, He will do. 
John chapter 14, verse 29. Jesus says, Now, I have told you before it comes to pass, that when it comes to pass, you may believe. He didn't say, I've told you beforehand, and you should have it all mapped out, you should know exactly when it's going to happen, and you should be able to tell other people all about it. He didn't say that, dear friends. <coughs> That's what we're trying to do with end time prophecy, so that we can give a little bit of knowledge here and there about all that we understand and know, it's not for that, dear friends. It's so that when we see these things, we will believe. We believe. We'll be strengthened. What if you get your timeline and you've got your sequence of prophetic events all in line? And it doesn't happen the way you thought it would. Are you going to fall apart and say, oh, God's let me down? No. I hope not. Beware, dear friends. Don't listen to the many that are around in these days. What else? The last one for this morning anyway. Take heed to yourselves. See yourself. How should you see yourself? Hmm? Well, Peter saw himself. What did Peter see in himself? Hmm? He was the one who'd never deny the Lord. Never. Not in a million years. Not me. Everybody else might run for it, Lord. Not me. Oh, no. Not me. Matthew 26. <clears throat> Verse 31. Jesus said to them, what? You'll all fall away. There's going to be a great falling away. What does scripture say about the return of Jesus? There will be a great falling away. Jesus says to the disciples, you'll all fall away. <clears throat> it's going to be a great falling away. For it is written, it's prophesied. What's prophesied? There'll be a great falling away. At the first coming of Messiah, the stone which the builders rejected, that stone which was going to be the great cornerstone, <coughs> this one, the Messiah who was going to bear our sins in his own body on the tree, pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, he was going to be betrayed, and when they struck the shepherd, guess what? The sheep were going to run for it. They were all going to leg it. They would be scattered. But after I've been raised, I'll go before you to Galilee. But Peter answered and said to him, Even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. And Jesus said, Truly I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times. Peter said, Even if I have to die with you, I'll not deny you. And all the disciples said the same thing. Peter gets a bit of a bad press, doesn't he? 
He's the one that we get the details about. But they all fell away. They all scattered. They all departed. And they were all fully convinced that it would never happen to them. They'd never deny Jesus. Peter said he'd die for him. Turn to Second Thessalonians chapter 2. <coughs> Second Thessalonians and chapter 2. I read from verse 1. It says, Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our gathering together to him, that you may not be quickly shaken from your composure, from your mind, your way of thinking. Don't be shaken in the way that you think. Or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you. For it will not come unless what? The apostasy comes first. There will be a great falling away. The apostasy comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction. What's going to happen? A great falling away. A great departure. People betraying the Lord. People turning away from him. People denying him. Believers betraying one another. Delivering up one another. It's got to happen, dear friends. It will happen. And the man of lawlessness must be revealed. Who is he? I don't know. Not yet. But he's coming. And when we see him, we shouldn't be flapping around like headless chickens. We should be strong in our faith because all these things have been revealed to us beforehand so that when they come about we should believe the one who opposes and exalts himself above every so called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? Paul was telling them about the return of Jesus, about the second coming, what had to take place. Jesus spoke of the abomination of desolation being set up in the holy place. Let the reader understand the book of Daniel. We need to understand, remember, the book of Daniel. There must be a temple rebuilt. Mm -hmm. It will not be a godly one. Nowhere in scripture that I can think of is there any exhortation for the Jews or anybody else mm -hmm. to rebuild the temple. You are the temple of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But there will be a temple. And in that temple, the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, will oppose God and exalt himself as having, as if he was God, and he will be worshipped. And that must take place. That must take place. Turn to Mark chapter 14. Mark's Gospel and chapter 14. Verse 29, Peter says, Even though 
all may fall away. I will not. What's Peter's problem? He thinks he's got it all and he has need of I'll never deny you, Lord. Never. Everybody else might, not me. He trusted in himself. Dear friends, if we trust in ourselves in these days, we're going to depart from the Lord. The day we start thinking that we can do it, and we've got it all, we're in big trouble. What do we need? We need Him. We need the power of the Holy Spirit, dear friends, in our lives. Is he able to keep us? Amen. He's able to keep us. Is he able <coughs> to present us on that day? Spotless. With great joy. Complete in Jesus. Is he able to do it? Amen. He's able, dear friends. Is his grace sufficient for us? Absolutely. But can you do it? You can't do it, dear friends. But He will. And He is able. What happened? Number one, fear gripped Him. Fear gripped Him. All the disciples, they were so sure they were going to be able to step. They would never depart from Jesus. They'd never lay him down and then fear gripped them. Dear friends, do not fear. Do not fear. Do not be anxious and do not be fearful. When you see these things, do not be anxious and do not be fearful. We're specifically told in the last days when all these things are happening and there's awful things throughout the earth. And God is shaking everything. There's the most awful destruction and, and wickedness and human misery. The Lord says, don't be afraid. Don't be anxious and don't be afraid. Because that's what happened to the disciples. What else? Peter followed at a distance. He followed at a distance. They arrested Jesus. Peter had said he was never going to forsake him. So he followed at a distance. Dear friends, don't follow Jesus at the distance. We need to walk closely with the Lord Jesus. He needs to be at the centre of our lives. We need a real relationship with Jesus. Just a closer walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is our plea. Daily, walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Walk with the Lord, dear friends. Enoch walked with God 300 years. You won't have 300 years. You're not going to have to endure 300 years, dear friends. But Enoch walked with God for 300 years. So don't ever say it's not possible. You can walk with God every day. You can have a close fellowship by the Holy Spirit. You can walk in the very presence of the Lord. Being aware of His presence, minute by minute, talking to Him. Communing with Him, fellowshipping with Him by the Spirit of God. So don't walk afar off. Don't follow Him 
at some distance. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. What else? He started warming himself at the world's fire. He started warming himself on the world's fire. Dear friends, we can warm ourselves on the world's fire, can we? When things get tough, the easiest thing, have a few days off. Put your feet up. Let's have, put the tally on. Warming ourselves at the world's fire, dear friends. Don't do it. We need the Lord. We need the Lord. And we need to trust Him. Let's just look at one or two scriptures. <clears throat> Luke chapter 21 and verse 9. Luke's account of the Olivet Discourse. Luke 21 and verse 9. When you hear of wars and disturbances, do not be what? Don't be fearful, don't be terrified. These things must take place, but the end does not follow immediately. Don't be fearful, dear friends. Do not be afraid. Verse 14. Make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves. What's going to happen? There will be a great persecution in the coming days. Make up your mind beforehand. What? That you are going to look to the Holy Spirit for His help, for His utterance. Who do you need? You need the Lord, dear friends. You need the help, the enabling, the strengthening of the Holy Spirit. You need utterance from the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Who do you need? Well, I don't need anything. Mm. No, we need the Holy Spirit, dear friends. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be walking in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We need a close walk with the Lord in these days. Do we need anything? Yes, we need. <coughs> Let's look at one or two scriptures to close. Isaiah chapter 12. And verse 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. Is he yours this morning? Yes. Do you know Jesus in a real way as your Lord and Savior? Then you can say, Behold, God is my salvation. I will do what? I will trust and not be afraid. Can you trust and be afraid? No. Are you trusting if you're in afraid? No. no. The two things do not go together, dear friends. <laughs> when we're commanded not to fear, it's because the Lord wants us to trust. I will trust and not be afraid. The one replaces the other. So do not be fearful because when you're fearful you are not trusting. Simply trusting. The Lord God is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. Isaiah chapter 26 <clears throat> and verse 3 says, The steadfast of mind thou wilt keep in 
perfect peace. Because he trusts in thee. Are you in perfect peace this morning? Is your mind at rest? Are you trusting? Are you trusting? Simply trusting the Lord. Or are you worried and bothered about many things? <laughs> if you're worried and bothered about many things, stop being a Martha and learn to be a Mary. Sit at the Lord's feet and listen to his word. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Which everybody knows, probably. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Trust him. Trust him. In what? Everything. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Know the Lord in everything. In all your ways, know him. And lastly, Psalm 84. Psalm 84. And verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing. Does he withhold from those who walk uprightly? O Lord of hosts, how blessed is the man who trusts, trusts in thee. Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. May God bless his word to us this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will help us in these coming days to see things right. Lord, we ask that you'll help us not to be afraid, but to trust in you. Not ourselves, not in any human institution, but to trust alone in our blessed Saviour. Lord, we ask that, that you'll help us to walk closely with you in these days. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.